January 15, 1901, Volume 4. Jesus tells her that she forms his greatest martyrdom. Since in the past days my beloved Jesus made himself seen as somehow indignant with the world, this morning, not seeing him come, I kept thinking to myself, who knows whether he is not coming because he wants to send some chastisement. And what have I done wrong? Because he wants to send chastisements, he does not deign to come to me. How nice that while he wants to punish others, he has me get the greatest of chastisements, which is the privation of him. Now while I was saying this and other nonsense, my lovable Jesus made himself seen for just a little and told me, my daughter, you form the greatest martyrdom for me, because when I have to send some chastisement, I cannot show myself to you, since you bind me everywhere and do not want me to do anything. And as I do not come, you deafen me with your complaints, with your laments and expectations, so much so that while I am occupied with chastising, I am forced to think about you, to hear you, and my heart is lacerated in seeing you in your painful state of my privation. In fact, the most painful martyrdom is the martyrdom of love, and the more two persons love each other, the more painful those pains become, which arise not from others, but from between themselves. Therefore be quiet, be calm, and do not want to increase my pains through your pains. He disappeared, and I was left all mortified, thinking that I formed the martyrdom of my dear Jesus, and that in order not to make him suffer too much, when he does not come I must remain quiet. But who can make this sacrifice? It seems impossible to me, and I will be forced to continue martyring each other. January 15, 1911, Volume 10 Interest is the poison of the priest. God is not understood by those who are not stripped of everything and every one. Continuing in my usual state, my adorable Jesus made himself seen crying. The celestial mama brought him to me to calm him, and I tried to do as much as I could, kissing him, caressing him squeezing him to myself and saying to him, What do you want from me? Don't you want love to make you happy and calm your crying? Have you yourself not told me other times that your happiness is my love? And I love you very, very much. But I love you together with you, because by myself I don't know how to love you. Give me your burning breath, that it may melt my whole being into a flame of love. And then I will love you for all. I will love you with all. I will love you in the hearts of all. But who can tell all my nonsense? Then it seemed that he calmed down a little, and in order to distract my sweet love completely from crying, I said to him, My life and my all be consoled. When they do the reunions of priests, oh, how consoled you will be! And he immediately, Ha, ah, my daughter, interest is the poison of the priest, and has infiltrated so much into them as to poison their hearts, their blood, and even the marrow of their bones. Oh, how well did the devil weave it, having found in them a will disposed to be woven. My grace has used all of its art in order to form the weaving of love, and to give them the counterpoison to interest. But not finding their will disposed, it has woven little or nothing of the divine. So the devil, unable to prevent these houses of reunion for priests completely, with a great loss for him, contents himself at least with maintaining the web he has woven with the poison of interest. Oh, if you saw how few are those who are disposed to separate from their families with their hearts also and to throw up this poison of interest. You would cry with me. Don't you see how they fight among themselves in this regard? How they become agitated? How they become all fire? 
Even more they believe this is nonsense which does not befit their state. While he was saying this, I could see the priests who were disposed for this. How scarce was their number. Jesus disappeared, and I found myself inside myself. Now feeling repugnance to write these things about priests, but having made the sacrifice of doing it, because obedience wants it so, my beloved Jesus came afterwards and gave me a kiss to reward me for the sacrifice I made. And he added, My beloved daughter, you have not said everything about the inconveniences which could arise if the priest remains entangled in the bond of the family, the many mistaken vocations because of which the church cries bitterly in these times. One would certainly not see so many modernists, so many priests empty of true piety, so many of them given to pleasures, so many to intemperance, many others who look at souls being lost as if they were nothing, without the slightest bitterness, and all the other absurdities they do. These are signs of mistaken vocations, and if the family see that there is nothing more to hope for from priests, none of them will ever again feel like pushing their sons to become priests, nor will the sons ever think of enriching and lifting their families through their ministry. And I, ah, oh, my sweet Jesus, instead of telling these things to me, go to the leaders, to the bishops, and they who have authority can manage to content you on this point. But I, poor one, what can I do? Nothing but compassionate you, love you, and repair you. And Jesus, my daughter, to the leaders, to the bishops, the poison of interest has invaded everyone. And since almost all of them are taken by this pestilential fever, they lack the courage to correct and to check those who depend on them. And then, I am not understood by those who are not stripped of everything and of every one. My voice resounds very badly to their hearing. Even more, it seems an absurdity to them, something that is not appropriate for the human condition. If I speak with you, we understand each other well enough, and if nothing else, I find a vent for my sorrow, and you will love me more because you know that I am embittered. January 15, 1920, Volume 12 One who wants to love, repair, substitute for all, must live in the divine will. I was pouring all of myself into the divine volition, to be able to substitute for everything that the creature is obliged to do toward the supreme majesty, and while I was doing this I said to myself, where can I find enough love to be able to give my sweet Jesus love for all? And he told me in my interior, My daughter, in my will you will find this love, which can make up for the love of all, because one who enters my will will find many springing fonts, and as much as he may take, they never decrease one drop. There is the font of love, which impetuously spouts its waves, but as much as it spouts, it always springs forth. There is the font of beauty, and no matter how many beauties it releases, it never fades. On the contrary, it springs with ever new and more rare beauties. There is the font of wisdom, the font of contentments, the font of goodness, of power, of mercy, of justice, and of all the rest of my qualities. They all spring up, and each one pours into the other in such a way that love is beautiful, is wise, is powerful, and so forth. The font of beauty gives beauty of love, wise and powerful, and with such power as to keep the whole of heaven enraptured, without ever tiring it. These springing fonts form such a harmony, such a contentment, and an enchanting show that all the blessed remain so sweetly enchanted that they never move, even one glance, so as not to miss even one of these contentments. Therefore, my daughter, for one who wants to love, 
repair, and substitute for all, there is the strict necessity to live in my volition from where everything springs, where things multiply as many times as needed and remain all coined with the divine imprint. This divine imprint forms the other fonts whose waves rise and rise so much that in pouring out they flood everything and do good to all. Therefore always, always in my will, there I await you, there I want you. End of January 15th Fiat 1.0